So getting this thing started, how exactly would you describe what it is that you do? You know, what is your work here in this life? <laughs> well, I, I would describe it as just being me, being myself, right? And the self with the capital S. Mm -hmm. So uh, if we were going to pin it down, maybe, I would say I assist in the uh, the recognition for each person to recognize the self within them with the capital S. And there's various ways of doing that, books, classes, courses, conversations like this. But I would say I, I, I'm just me. I'm just being me. Uh, and that's actually what I most desire for humanity is for them to free themselves of the confines of the conditioned mind so they can actually be themselves as well. Mm, wonderful, man. Yeah. Um, I know you said there's various ways to go about it, but how would you describe in a general sense what this assistance and guidance looks like or sounds like? Uh, well, <clears throat> I mean, I do write books. There's a, there's my third book is coming out in August. Uh, I do classes, courses, retreats, workshops. I started a, a nonprofit. Uh, I have conversations with uh, people like yourself that are also assisting people and waking up, so to speak. Uh, almost really at, at a certain point, Gary, when, when one has uh, awakened, every notion that we give birth to serves uh, as an awakening for all those that desire the same for themselves mm. wow yeah i feel that every notion that we give birth to <laughs> yeah so the idea is really just in whatever form that it comes about whether it's a book a talk or just maybe just being with somebody it's bringing somebody to somebody as in you bring the person to themselves, their, their self that we all share as well. And that's just the gist of it. Yeah. I mean, this can be done. I mean, I could uh, open up a, a diner and serve pancakes. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't it really doesn't <laughs> matter. The, the form that the expression takes is completely and utterly irrelevant. The, the key is, is that every notion that we give birth to is imbued with our depth of love, wisdom, our authenticity, and our power, because it comes from the true self. Mm. The form it takes doesn't really matter. These are these are just the methods uh, or the means of expression um, that I seem to be drawn to, mm -hmm. which would be uh, writing, uh, teaching classes, courses, ha having, as I said, having conversations like this, starting a nonprofit. This is just seems to to be the particular way in which that. Uh, I enjoy expressing myself, I guess we could say. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, how would you say that one recognizes that they are truly in tune with this greater self? Is it some kind of intuitive sense that we have within where we just know? Yeah, there's a, there, Gary, there's a tangibility to it. So, yeah. um, I mean, I can... I'll give context, at least from my personal experience. So uh, I could flush it out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. There, there was a there was a moment when I was uh, in the hospital rehab uh, when I was quite sick and you know still paralyzed. It was pretty early on in that in that process, and I, I can remember it vividly. And I was sit, sitting in the hospital bed, and there, and paralyzed from the chest, really sick. I mean, near near death, and. Um, there was just this moment where all so-called knowledge and ignorance were literally seen as the same thing. And the whole thing, it literally just fell away. It was, it was gone. There was total clarity, serenity, peace, and a level of knowingness, gnosis. Right mm -hmm. to the, the self, which is the only true knowledge that exists, is knowledge of self. It it literally happened in that in that moment, and it's absolutely tangible. There's a there's a lightness to our to our to our beingness. There's a, a freedom 
to our beingness. There's, there's no confusion. There's no inner turmoil. There isn't even a striving yeah. for anything. Mm -hmm. the, the, the whole thing is it's almost, we could say that the, 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 the matrix had revealed itself and just kind of parted as mm -hmm. you know as a way of saying it. i'm just trying to pick another way of saying it but there but it, it gary it's it, it, you can feel it yeah there's a tangible quality and all the inauthenticity of our human character the ego mind identity or the pattern subconscious egoic mind it it's it's literally it, it just dissolves mm -hmm. and it it never actually returns and you feel it, it, it starting in that moment that was the first time as RJ that I truly felt like myself with a capital S. That was that was really me. It's almost like that's that's my real birthday. That's the day that I was truly born. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh and it took the complete destruction of my body and uh uh and the near death uh through the mm -hmm. through the sepsis for for this to occur. Mm. Yeah. Quite the rebirth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I find that um, is a similar story between the people that I speak to and having this um, intimate dawning of greater self. It's approaching near death, whether it's through some kind of actual near death experience like you or some kind of almost I was, maybe simulated experience in the mind, you know, an ego death. It seems to be a killing of the ego, we've all heard that before, and then being reborn into a genuine sense of how you live here. Um, it's interesting that it came to you in that way, and I do feel as though that's how it comes about in a lot of our lives, is like we have to kill the illusion. We have to get rid of the, the false ideal of who we thought we were, and then truly be reborn. But sometimes it takes some really intense experiences to get there um yeah do you say that is like a a sort of uh blueprint for one to tap into that it's a it's a killing of the ego in one way or the other yeah uh, yeah i think so i mean i mean the caterpillar completely and utterly destroys itself yeah right self-immolation mm -hmm. for it to become what it truly is the butterfly and I think you're 100 percent right and if we look at the e ego death and 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 then physical death right so the the main or or foundation at least from my perspective the foundation of the ego mind identity is the misidentification with with the form yeah with the with the body right mm -hmm. which then reduces us to what i call body consciousness which is just five senses and the data stream that comes in is what forms our intellect right now none of that is actually what we are Mm -hmm. zero so i think there's a real correlation between ego death and physical death because as we approach physical death the ego has nothing to identify itself with anymore because we identify with the body and if the body is in the throes of of uh death right the ego is going to have a hard time clinging yeah right so yeah. sometimes sometimes they go they go hand in hand but i also i also feel that it's possible and uh, this is well, let me, I'm going to look at something here, even though it looks like I'm looking at nothing, but <laughs> well, it's also, okay. So if we look at someone like uh, Ramana Maharshi, so there, there was no physical um, challenge, right? Yeah. That, that, that was almost what we could call spontaneous mm. enlightenment, right? So so sometimes, Gary, everything that we just said, right? Now that didn't apply. I mean, there's always outliers, right? There's always exceptions. Yeah. But that certainly didn't apply to to Ramana. So, but probably in general, if if there isn't some kind of uh, near death experience or or something so destructive to the con to the false construct that we have built within the ego mind identity. Um, I feel that for most people, that's the avenue that we take uh, in order to truly wake up. We have to see past the illusion of our misperceptions, misunderstandings, and misidentifications. And I know for me, uh, that that moment, I, I was near enlightenment, probably, quite frankly, for years and years and years. And, and I think I was 
quite satisfied uh, to to be nearly enlightened. But clearly, I had I had a uh, I had other plans. The destruction of my body forced me uh, to tap into more of who and what I, I really am, and to summon all my all my powers to be able to put my body back together. But I do think there's a there's real synergy between physical death and ego death. And then at the same time, as we just said, I, there's also outliers. And I think Ramana Maharshi is, is a great example of an outlier. Yeah. Do you think these outliers are um, outliers because they had these experiences in past lives? You know, when we get into reincarnation, it's because they kind of already went through that stuff. Yeah. That's, that, that, yeah. That's a, a brilliant insight. So I, I would I would definitely say um, that. It works like a muscle memory, mm -hmm. right? So once we have experienced authentic liberation, self-realization, enlightenment, which are which are really the same thing, and then there's what's past enlightenment, believe it or not. But uh, once this is experienced, it, it it becomes it's like a muscle memory, and that's kind of what I've described. What all these different books and prescription prescriptive courses that I teach, it all this just came back to me. This was a remembering. Yeah. Uh -huh. This was an an absolute remember. It's like I and how I describe it. I remembered how to heal myself, mm. right? So I, I think once once we do it once, the, it's it's literally feels like a muscle memory, and we can draw upon it really in any incarnation at at, at any time. Mm. Yeah, man, I feel that one hundred percent. Wow, yeah. The universe is so mysterious in that way. It's like how do we? How does that even work, man? How do we have these things ingrained in our soul? You know, like, where is it? Where's the hard drive? That's what I want to wonder is like, how do we, I don't know, because we think it's all in the brain. Like we all, all of our memories are in the brain. But then when you put it that way, it's like, how, you know, how do we have these skills and these things that we know that we forgot that are from past lifetimes? It's not just all in the brain. It's in some kind of, uh, some kind of frequency. I don't know, some kind of something in the ethers. Yeah, so we mysterious. could. We could look at it if this is helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the the self is is multi dimensional, multi frequential. The the human being is not. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. right. So we we reduce ourselves through, as we said before, the misidentification with the form, right? So then we're locked into we're locked into body consciousness. We're locked into logic and linearity because that's that's actually how the human mind operates with within the third frequency where we are. Now, what we actually are has got nothing to do with that. Right. Mm. So just as an image, right, it's just as an image, if we think of an octopus, right, and we and we think of the, the octopus as our higher self, I'm sure you're familiar with it with the, the higher self, right? So the octopus is the higher self, right? And the tentacle is an aspect, a projected aspect or soul, right? What you and I are, right? Well, that octopus can have many tentacles down into various levels of yeah. water, mm -hmm. but they're all the octopus. Mm -hmm. Right. So when we start to tap into what we really are and what we really are is the octopus. I mean, we're a tentacle, but we're a part of the octopus. So self-realization or enlightenment as a as an analogy is when the the connection has gone back to the octopus. You you remain the tentacle. Yeah. But you have rekindled the connection to the larger you. And the larger you is all of these other tentacles or all of these other incarnations and they're all happening right now which the human mind is like that's right mm -hmm. but it is just like you your radio can only play one station at a time but how many songs are playing right now right okay so it's just the same kind of or your tv you can only watch one station at a time but satellite tv there's ten thousand stations playing all right now you can only watch one at a time so i think where this memory comes from again it's an analogy the memory comes from when we have rekindled our connection to who and what we really are which is the octopus and the octopus is simultaneously concurrently and in parallel all these other different incarnations and that's and this to me by the way is the superhuman when you can start to tap into that what we're doing is we're we're opening ourselves up to a supreme intelligence mm. that is so far beyond the human intellect that this is what creates the master this is what creates the the superhuman is when we tap into who and what we really are and all those different facets. Mm. Very well said. Yeah. In that way, I got the visualization of our brain, not as a hard drive, like I said before, but more of like a radio transmitter. And we're just opening up the transmission for us to get that to the octopus. <laughs> the yeah. Octopus. I, 
Yeah, I think the highest use of the mind is 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 or, or the best use mm -hmm. of the mind is to tap in and tune into the highest frequencies that are being broadcast right yeah. now. And, and you're absolutely right. I feel the same way that the, the highest use of the brain is a receiver yeah. of these higher frequencies, which speak to us in pure energetics that gets translated by intuition. And that intuition then speaks with us, speaks to us, and then mm. we can take action mm -hmm. upon the translation of the pure energetics from from the octopus and the higher frequencies. <laughs> <laughs> the greater octopus, yeah. the almighty octopus. <laughs> 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 yeah, man, I, I feel that. Yes, the subtle whispers of intuition. Uh, I feel that. But if one isn't silent or still enough, you won't hear it. You know, um, I feel as though this whole path alludes to just finding a sense of peace and stillness in one's life, you know, just really incorporating a meditative lifestyle, whether it is actually meditating or having some sort of meditative mindset, if that makes sense. Um, it just really comes down to being still and knowing that you are God or that you are the octopus. <laughs> um, do you agree with that? Like, is it just um, in order to get the transmission do we just have to incorporate a meditation practice in our life? And I know that's very general. It's a very general statement. But do you think it revolves in one way or the other around just being still, being silent mind? Oh, 100%. I think you, I think you nailed it. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a silly analogy is like a snow globe, right? You, you shake the snow globe, right? Thoughts. You shake the snow globe. You can't see anything, right? You got all that stuff like this and you, you can't see right but when we become just as you were talking about still yeah. and silent yep. inside all the snow and the snow globe just falls right down mm. and now there's there's instant clarity and now we can see very clearly and through that seeing there will be understanding mm. and i think that's that, that's exactly i mean it's a snow globe and it's an analogy but it, when we can be still inside and not be the shaken snow globe, the intuition will speak to us. Yep. And in pure energetics, and it gets it gets translated. And I really feel the key is to develop that as a as a normalized state, mm. as a state of being. So what I what I have found, Gary, uh, since I started officially teaching way way back when, is that the struggle that people have with meditation. And people mm -hmm. have come to me, I know, I've tried and tried and tried and I can't meditate. Or I've had people come to me who said they've been doing Vipassana meditation for 15 years, 20 years. And then we we meditate together and people are like, now I feel like I finally meditated. I don't think, I don't know what I was doing the last 15 years, but now I feel like I, I've meditated. I think the key understanding, Gary, is to know that the self is meditation. Self mm -hmm. with the capital S. Mm -hmm. We exist before there's a thought. Yeah. Yeah. So meditation is just being present. Mm -hmm. And that being present is our natural state, which doesn't require any effort. It's effortless to meditate because the self is meditation. Mm -hmm. The key is to normalize that. To normalize that. Not, hey, time out from my day. Let me go in my room, light my incense, get my crystals. I love incense and crystals. But let me let me sort of break free of my daily routine of being me and let me let me go meditate. I really feel this is backwards. I think it should be the other way around. I think we should be in a perpetual state of meditation, even in our doing this, right? We tap into the beingness and then put the beingness into the doing this. So now everything becomes meditation. Everything is meditation because the self is meditation. And if the self is driving the bus of the incarnation, everything that we do is a form of meditation. So I think once humanity flips that around, so what that means is we're in a state of meditation, even as we're being active or in doing this. And then if a half hour out of the day, instead of taking a half hour out to go meditate, I'd like to see humanity, if we get triggered for a half hour and the ego mind identity is going nuts about whatever, that's fine. That's fine. Come back. And then return to your all day, all day long, all activities within your meditative state mm. instead of the other way around. And it's effortless. And once we do that, I don't think there's our, our state of being, our quality of life, everything about this experience, this human experience will be elevated by an order of magnitude just by taking the beingness and putting it into the doingness and remaining as the self and the self is meditation. Mm-hmm. Amen to that.
Yeah, I agree for sure. Um, but do you feel that in order to bring the beingness into the doingness, one has to, in order to rework the muscle memory of the mind, you could say, to actually have some sort of rigid schedule of meditation. And then once that's incorporated into the life style, you can bring that actually into the, the goings on of your life. I think you're probably right. I think in the beginning, well, the, I like to say the the highest process is no process. But in order to work with the no process, we we actually need a process. Yeah. So we need a process to get to the no process. Which it's kind of a like joke. An, yeah, it's that's an oxymoron. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Or no, but it, it's true. So I think we need a process, and then it gets to the no process. So yeah, yeah I think in the beginning. Uh, consciously working towards uh, some kind of meditative, just like we would go to the gym or whatever, do yoga. It's like, well, let me take 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, two hours, whatever it is. And let me start to develop this muscle. And then what we'll start to realize, hopefully, is that we never have to come out of that. Yeah. So th there's this whole thing. We just, did, we just did a workshop, Gary, in San Diego. And one of the things that we did is uh that i that i do in all the workshops and retreats is we we do this transcendent meditation that's in that's in my first book it's called the spaceship meditation i don't know if you're familiar with that we go to very very high frequencies and dimensions and what i noticed people were were doing is that we would have this experience it would change people and then they had this this conscious action to to come back and ground themselves and really what that means is they're exploring the, the depth of themselves and their higher mind, they're exploring more of themselves, right? In this expanded state of consciousness. And then they would quote unquote, come back down the dimensionally and frequentially come back down here. And then they would come all the way back down. And then the ego mind identity would immediately be present. Mm -hmm. So what we did the last time was we would go to this very, very high state of consciousness. And when we're all in it, we're all experiencing it. I literally said, okay, open your eyes. Mm -hmm. Now stay that expanded now uh, mm -hmm. and, and just continue. So that's part of the, I feel that's part of the spiritual fiction of that you have to ground yourself. Actually, the grounding to me sounds like the uh, the justification for bringing back the conditioned mind and and leaving behind that expanded state. And I found that the exact opposite is the best way to operate. It's to stay in the expanded state even when we're just here and now. And people that started doing that, they they said it changed everything for them. But to come all the way back, I do believe that uh, to start off with having some kind of practice is great, and then eventually you'll realize as you're meditating, and you're in and you're in it, which is really the self. You're deep within the self. Just open your eyes and proceed. Yeah. Just continue, continue like that, and watch watch what happens with your life. Mm -hmm. Open your eyes and proceed. Yeah, yeah that's good. <laughs> Open your third eye and proceed. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, man. So once we bring this sense of being in our work, in our lifestyle, in the doing, you could say, um, in a general sense, how do you say our work or lifestyle changes, you know? Like, is it more toward a sense of servitude, a, a selflessness, uh, you know, rather than competition, maybe a little bit of cooperation in our life? In a general sense, I know it's hard to generalize, but here we are doing it. How would you say that like uh, humanity changes from this? Or how would the whole earth change if we were all in this wavelength, hypothetically? Oh, wouldn't that be nice to see, by the way? Um, <laughs> it would be nice. <laughs> well, I think what one of the, I think you touched on a bunch of the qualities that happens. I mean, the oneness starts to become apparent, mm -hmm. right? And so then serving, right? So the natural impulse to share to express and share our depth of love and wisdom who subsets our talents and abilities, which is what the I am with the self, the capital F. That's what God is, is actually that. Mm -hmm. So the, the God has arisen within us and everything that we're not has kind of, so there'll be this natural oneness, this natural inclination to share. The sharing will start to take over because the self is now driving the bus of the incarnation. And that sharing really is our love and wisdom and our talents and abilities. And with that, there'll be this tangible sense of oneness and not se not separation. So I think you're right. Competition, I mean, there, 
there's no there's no others who are you competing against exactly yeah but it's it's gone and there's also a this real effortless flow to things and i don't want people to take that in, in terms of uh, spiritual egotism in the sense that that means i don't ever have to really do anything this is nonsense this is absolute nonsense desire intention thought emotion action and behavior you need all of them in alignment with the self and you have to actually perform and engage with all of those things which is the order of creation as i experience it so it's not just like well then i just stop doing anything this is garbage we don't just sit around singing kumbaya and don't do anything mm -hmm. right but there's a harmony to it and there's a flow to it and it 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 lends itself to an effortless type state even though there's a doing this yeah, I don't want people. I don't want people to have the translation of well, then you don't do anything. This is quite the opposite. I lead a very active life in terms of the things that I do. Very mm -hmm. active, but there's no resistance, mm -hmm. and I'm just I'm just flowing with it. It's kind of like the ego mind identity dies, which is the resistance. It gets out of the way, and now there's this this gorgeous flow that kind of just starts to incorporate the 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 unconscious collective in order to sort of raise that to make it the conscious collective. So there is that oneness, there's this flow. Every aspect of our life is enhanced because the, the one thing that was bringing every aspect of our life down, the ego mind identity has has vanished. Mm. Yeah, man. Um, do you feel that it's because in your work you're giving up the need and want of fruits of your labor like the fruits will come and go you'll still have fruits of your labor but it's not necessarily doing it for that brilliant absolutely that's yeah, it, yeah. It, that's exactly right so it's the joy of the act of creation itself yeah yep and you when when you stay present right you never stop and look for a result mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so the fruits of the late, just like you said, Gary, it's brilliant. They it it, it just starts to appear or manifest or, how, or however you want to say that. It just starts to come into your reality as you continually stay in this creative process mm -hmm. because you're so locked into the, the present moment. Then all of these things start to come together. Books actually get written and published. Courses actually get completed and they're available to be taught and, you know, and so on and so on. It just starts to happen. Yep. But it, it happens most powerfully when we never take ourselves out of the act of creation and stopping and then looking for a result. It's kind of like driving to the store and then pulling over to the side of the road and getting out to see if you're getting any closer to the store. Well, now you're never going to get to the store because you uh -huh. stopped. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we just stay in that flow. And I, and yeah, you stop looking for the results because you're doing it for the joy of the, the creation itself. Yeah. The joy of the creation itself. Yeah. So well said, man. I feel that as well. I got this visualization of uh, just a dance, man. Think about when we dance. We don't dance to get to the end of the dance. We don't listen to music to get to the end of the song. We just get lost in the music. And I feel like that's the essence of this flow is to just get lost in the music, man. The music of our lives, the song of our lives. And yeah, how beautiful it is, right? That is a perfect analogy, Gary. Yeah. Yeah. That is a per that's a perfect analogy. And the conditioned mind, the egoic mind, is a result-oriented uh system. Yep. Right. Yeah. And and now look at that in, in juxtaposition to what you just said. Mm -hmm. Right? The ego mind is always looking to get a result. And as soon as it gets that, it goes, okay, what next? Yep. <laughs> right. So now what? It's, mm -hmm. yeah, not yeah, now what? I I you're you're so right. That was beautifully said. It's to be in the flow. To mm. always be in the flow. And we are that flow. We are the life force. Yeah. That's what we are. And the key is to to get what we're not out of the way. So we could just we can just flow perpetually and endlessly. Mm hmm Yeah. Now, would you say that this is the incentive? If you want to say there's an if there is an incentive to this process and this path, it's to actually enjoy our life, enjoy the experience here as a human? That's, that's I would say, yeah. You get the <laughs> yeah, you get the most out of the experience when you're the most present. Yeah. Right. So if we switch from my perspective, if, if we switch from quantifying our existence based upon how productive we are, which is a slave mentality, which is the conditioned mind. So if we turn that on its head 
And if we're going to quantify our existence, we should might as well quantify it based upon how present we've been all day. Mm. Because mm-hmm. that's where we'll get the most flow mm-hmm. is how present. And if, to me, that's a true achievement about yeah. truly being present. And then you'll actually realize that this, this life is such a gift and such a joy, even in these lower frequencies with all this stuff going on. It, it, it it's still perfect. Yep. It, it's absolutely perfect. And then we'll take, we'll taste our own lightness, our own freedom, our own expansion. And it's, it's simply by being present and mm. not looking for some kind of reward or result for, uh, for the creations that we actually do. Yep. Very true. And very well said by being present, we're able to see the light in the darkness. Yeah. Even if it's very minuscule, the light is still there. Yeah, it's all perspective, man. It's all perspective. Yeah, we're we're never we're never uh, victims of circumstance. We're victims of our of our own lack of perspective. Yeah, that's a good one right there. Yeah, that's very true, man. Wow, that's why I call this thing the conscious perspective. I think it's all about perspective, man. It's all about that shift of how we see ourselves, how we see the world, how we see everything. And that makes all the difference. Yeah. It's like nothing really on the outside changes, just changes how you see it. And in that way, it it, kind of does change, (laughs) sort of. It doesn't really, but it's like when you do see it differently, it kind of does. It's almost quantum in that way, if that makes sense. Yeah, Um, yeah, precisely. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, this is a good talk. Some powerful stuff, man. Um, Now, let me ask you to be the devil's advocate. What? uh pulls us in the most to the ego mindset you know what would you say holds us back the most to uh not be able to see our own light oh i I, well i feel the that's a great question i I feel the okay let me let me back up i would say that in incarnation into the lower frequencies of the physical universe which is which is where we are I know we like to say we're going into 4D or 5D. Okay, no, we're in uh, energy exists frequentially. We're in the third frequency of the first full dimension. Energy exists frequentially, not dimensionally. But we are at the bottom three frequencies that band together to give us height, weight, width, and what we call a three dimensional reality. So we're at the the uh, the bottom of the high rise. If the multiverse was a high rise, yeah, we're at the we're at the bottom. Okay, now inherent within this incarnation into the lower frequencies gary is uh the the experience of limitation it's inherent in that. so if we if we look at the lord if we come from the larger perspective not the human perspective if we come from the larger perspective what does an immortal unlimited fractal of god what, what would it like to experience how about what limitation might be like yeah because in our normal state, there is no limitation. There's the connectivity to everything all at once. It's as soon as you have the intention, it occurs, right? Down here, that's not how it's like, right? So we get to experience limitation. So that's that's really what's behind incarnating into the lower frequencies of the physical universe is to experience a sense of limitation. Plus, our agenda is to map out the entire multiverse, which is within God. So we're mapping out God, God's learning about itself as we learn about ourselves, as we are a fractal of God and we are within God. But it is absolutely an experience of limitation. And the goal of incarnating into the lower frequencies of the physical universe is to, of course, realize the self, self-realization, to experience authentic union. And you don't have to do this again unless you want to out of, out of service. Right, mm-hmm. but it is to it is to experience the limitation itself, and then when we when we work with ourselves properly, from my perspective, the limitations are seen for what they are. They're they're an illusion. They're an absolute illusion. It's because what we are is this multi dimensional fractal of God that is so misidentified itself with the body, and then we get reduced to body consciousness. It's it, it's like when you get in your car, right. We lose all the other abilities that we naturally have when we're not in the car. Yeah. But when we get in the car, we don't think that we're the car. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that's what. So we lose so much consciousness as we're as we're as the octopus is projecting one of its tentacles all the way down here. We're losing consciousness, and through this loss of consciousness, it's like we have total amnesia, and we wake up here wearing the suit. So we immediately identify that we're with, you know, we are the suit. 
So that the, the whole point is to experience that sense of limitation and then to transcend the limitation to realize that there are no locks and bolts to anything and everything is connected. It's all one thing. And we're not actually in, a, in an experience of limitation. The limitation is through the identification with the body, which then reduces us to body consciousness and then just the capabilities of the vehicle itself. Meanwhile, the I am, the self with the capital S is connected to everything, absolutely everything. So there actually is no limitation, but it's the experience of yeah. limitation, which sounds like an oxymoron, but it's it's not. <laughs> I get you. Yep. <laughs> I get you. So on my question is what uh what makes us believe the limitations? You know, what what would you say is the greatest pull into believing the limitations are real? The, the, well, the collapsing of consciousness and the constriction of energy through the misperceptions, misunderstandings, and misidentifications with the physical form. Uh -huh. So yeah. without question, without question, it's the incarnation that actually produces that. So through our like wants and desires is what you're saying? The humanly, humanly stuff? <laughs> the, it, literally. So mm -hmm. the, wants and de the wants and desires of the human being has nothing to do with the wants and desires of the true self. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's what's been it's what's been programmed into us. Yeah. And so that's why for many, for most people, they work towards something, work towards something, work towards something, and then they finally get that house, they finally get that car, they finally get that that money. And then when they have it, they're kind of like, <laughs> now what? Right. That's because that's tangible proof that that desire was not germane to you. Yeah. Because yeah. once you've actually achieved it, it's empty. Yeah. Absolutely empty. Mm -hmm. so that that's how we know that none of these things really have anything to do with us the yeah. key is to find the desire of the true self the desire of the true self is just to express its depth of love and wisdom who subsets her talents and abilities that's actually the desire of the i am for it to be what it actually is whether it's in the low frequencies of the physical universe or at the very top of the multiverse mm. So essentially, we all have the same desire, all seven, eight billion of us. We all have the same desire to return to God, you could say. It's just that it's distorted, very distorted in other humanly desires. And we try to return to God in the car, the money, the house, the whatever it is, but it never adds up. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 yeah we're, we're misprogrammed. Yeah. I mean, that's just the truth of it, right? We are misprogrammed and we actually are indoctrinated into what passes for world culture which is is which is acquiring and becoming acquiring and becoming meanwhile you're already whole perfect and, comp and complete as you are mm -hmm. so that's that's the, that's the real deception that goes on here this yeah. idea of acquiring and becoming and that that's the goal whether it's acquiring money fame uh looks what what uh, you know stuff possessions uh, both tangible and intangible, such as so-called knowledge or, you know, driving a fancy car, whatever it is. The trick is the the idea to see past the acquiring and becoming and recognize the fullness of the self right now. And then there is we, we there is no acquiring and becoming and the whole game shifts. Mm. The whole game shifts. And for anyone who's who's going to be listening or watching if you have worked very hard to to achieve something and once you've done it doesn't mean anything to you that is the perfect example of that 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 desire is not germane to you that that desire was planted into you mm -hmm. for you to achieve it and that's why it feels empty and meaningless once you've done it yeah yeah that emptiness i would say is actually the good news yeah yeah <laughs> you got you got it you got it yeah. <laughs> it's good that it makes you you still have that yearning it's good that that emptiness is still present. Yeah, the the desire, the only death we ever experience is the is the separation from ourself. That's hmm. cuz death doesn't exist. I talk to dead people all day long. Death <laughs> right? So I mean death is it, it, life and death are concepts. Okay? Consciousness is a term. Yeah. And the only death we actually experience is when we are when we are disconnected from the self when we're not residing and marinating as within for and by the self and once once that once that takes place again we recognize the god within ourselves mm -hmm. and that's really what this is about to, to recognize the god within us and to infuse this realm with that vibration with our love and wisdom
Yeah. Because a rising tide lifts all ships. Mm. Yep. Infuse God within this realm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. That's so beautiful. And that's like, yeah, that's, it sounds lofty, but I actually do think that's the truth. That actually is the truth. That's what's going on here is we're all slowly as time is going on. It might seem slow, but in the scheme of things, I don't think it is. But I'll say slowly as time is going on, we're realizing that God exists. And it's not that God exists out there. God exists in here. And that's the grand revelation for us all, waiting for us all. And how beautiful is that, man? That is actually what's going on here. This whole spiritual path, it all comes down to us figuring out that we are a fragment of the divine. And hallelujah to that. It's wonderful times. That's it. You said it. You <laughs> add, that's 100% on the money. And that is what's happening. We're seeing that all these other paths, they're not supposed to work out. Yeah. The ego mind identity is designed to fail. It's designed to crumble. Mm-hmm. So what takes place is exactly what you just said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. It might seem crazy, right? To someone that has no idea what we're talking about right now, which I imagine people do understand if they listen this long, they understand. But <laughs> if they don't, uh, it might seem crazy, right? It's like, what? It's a, it, like We're all going to realize God is within and create this heaven on earth state. Haven't you watched Fox News lately? Does that even look like a possibility? But I don't know, that, um, that intuition, that pull toward God tells me that this is it, man. This is actually what's happening. It might be behind the scenes and definitely not on the news, but this is actually what's happening. And um, I don't know how long it's going to take. Do you have any estimates <laughs> off the top of your head of how long this would actually take for us to reach this uh, state and actually ascend the frequencies per se collectively? Well, we're, we're, it, it, it's happening now. I mean, we 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 actually are on the upswing. We were we were descending for quite a while, uh, and now we're on the upswing. And so, in order in order for us to, <clears throat> excuse me, from my perspective, to actually land ourselves within the fourth frequency, that we we have to leave behind everything that we have attached ourselves to. That's from here. Mm. Uh. The beliefs, the con right? Because mm -hmm. think of another silly analogy. Think of Spider Man shooting a spider web to some building, right? He's now attached to that building. He's stuck to that building. Where's he going? Nowhere, mm -hmm. right? So if we maintain our ego mind identity, which are the attachments and identifications to the things here, we are not going anywhere. So in order for us to ascend, for the caterpillar to become the butterfly, it's a it's a destructive, it's a destructive process. It's not a constructive yeah. process. So what we're actually watching when we turn on Fox News or any or any one of them, we're watching the thrashings of a dying consciousness. Yeah. Oh, and if, if we can all step back for a second and realize that's actually what we're watching, we're watching just flailing. Yeah. We're, 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 we're watching certain aspects of a, of a matrix that is falling apart. That is absolute. And it is, it is a destructive process. It absolutely is. And we have to embrace that while not identifying with it and it literally is the thrashings of a dying consciousness as we actually move as we actually ascend the frequencies mm -hmm. so for us to for us to anchor this in within ourselves within ourselves we have to recognize our misperceptions misunderstandings and misidentifications what we are what we have identified ourselves with and realize that that is what is keeping us from our own ascension and our own evolution and the greatest efficacy of the evolution of consciousness possible is slowed down most by attachments, which is what karma is. That's what slows the whole thing down. So if you can start to work with yourself, which isn't attached to anything, this pure awareness, and awareness has no attachments to anything. It's, it's like a time, we are like a time-lapse camera. The self with the capital S is like a time-lapse camera, and it is watching everything. And as it watches everything, it's, it's appreciation its depth of love and wisdom is deepening and accruing, becoming wiser and more forgiving and more loving and more powerful as we watch everything that is happening. But if we can start to operate as the time-lapse camera, we will allow the destructive process of the thrashings of a dying consciousness to do what needs to be done for it to, in a sense, aspects of it to be com completely fall apart. Yeah. 
because it, it it never served us in the sense that we can't take it with us to the fourth frequency. It has absolutely served us because it served as a great challenge or an impediment or what I call evolutionary tension, which forces us to go within. And that's where we get our growth from. But if we can detach and actually see what's happening, we're watching our own ascension happening through the thrashings of the dying consciousness. Mm. Yeah. Very well said. I don't have anything else to add to that. <laughs> Very well said, man. <laughs> and this new age started, I think you've said before, around uh, the revolution, American Revolution, 1776. Yeah. I mean, there's, from my direct experience, that uh, we've been out of the Kali Yuga for 200 and I, I did the calculation a couple of years ago. It was like 200 and I, I could be off a little bit, but about 200, 240 years. 200, and I started to notice that it was directly correlated to the the signing of the Declaration of Independence, which is us mm -hmm. moving out of the Kali Yuga. Mm -hmm. So we're we are leaving behind. We're leaving it behind and we are truly ascending the frequencies. And, yeah. and by the way, that document, if you ask me, Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights is as important a document that's ever been written in the history of humanity. Yeah. Yeah, very true, man. I see uh, America as uh, sort of New Jerusalem. Uh, you know, like this is the new holy land in a way. Um, it's the reason why everybody's trying to come here. And maybe we're a little biased. <laughs> but no, I it's, believe that. it's the crown jewel because it represents freedom. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's what this whole path is all about. It's liberation and freedom. So yeah. you got it. It is the crown jewel, which is why they're going after it as, as strongly as they can. And they're going to fail. Yeah, but it's mm -hmm. why they're going after it as strong as they can because it really is. It really is the crown jewel. The human, the a, a human being, from my perspective, Gary, a human being. It's an experiment, mm. and I've and I've said this before, but it, it's the experiment in individualized free will mm -hmm. that we all get to evolve in our own way in our own yeah. time. Yeah. Now, how do you counter the individualized free will project group think? Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. take a look at what's going on here take away free speech, right? Take away the ability, take away the, the rights and freedoms of the individual, conform, yeah, right? So yeah. that's what we're seeing. We're seeing the counterbalance, the evolutionary tension, which is what provides us, which is the, the, the catalyst for our own evolution, right? We need the evolutionary tension. We'd never know what we're capable of if we weren't forced into, we'd never get off the couch. We would just sit here and, you know, play pole position or whatever. I used to play pole position. I'm old. <laughs> so we, we need the evolutionary tension. We, yeah. ab we absolutely need it. But this is, this is all by design. And the design of all this, by the way, was designed by us. Because without the so-called bad guys, th there wouldn't be enough evolutionary tension for us to force ourselves into our own evolution. Exactly. It's like, would Batman be Batman if it wasn't for the Joker? <laughs> yeah right uh, right breathing is both inhaling and exhaling one creates uh, the other and needs the other yin and yang yeah that, i mean that's <laughs> that's the real truth of it so uh i know this sounds weird thank goodness for the bad guys they yeah. they force us to bring out the best in us mm -hmm. yeah that's um that's a very mature mindset that's a very elevated mindset yeah thank goodness for the darkness it's like nothing is truly evil here. Even the most evil acts in the darkness that we one could, um, you know, dive into in their life. Truly, at the end of the day, at the most absolute sense, there's nothing bad here per se. It's all for us if you want to look at it like that. Yeah, yeah. that's a very elevated perspective, yeah. and one one that I'm right there with you. I, I mean, how I the, the words that I use. I don't, I don't even like using the word spirituality because that's been hijacked, right? So mm -hmm. I don't really use that word. Metaphysics. To me, everything is about metaphysics and mastering oneself is an alchemical metaphysical process. And that's what self-mastery is. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm here for, right? So low frequency and high frequency exists. That's tangible. We can feel that. Mm -hmm. So what human beings call evil is generally from a religious perspective, which means we're not seeing things clearly. Now, what we call evil is really a low frequency way of operating. It is an alternative way of operating. So instead of working towards going up the frequencies, an alternative way of operating is to immerse oneself in a low frequency mm. way of operating. And if we can start seeing it that way, 
will have some detachment and it will allow us to, to work with these situations more effectively. When we don't start labeling things good, bad, right, wrong, evil, this and that. That's yeah. That is that's not clarity. That's still a shaken snow globe. That's mm -hmm. still a shaken snow globe. But if we can start to see these things from a purely metaphysical process, which is uh, which is part of what the Aquarian age is or the age of uh, Saint Germain, is that we start to understand and work with ourselves in this way, and we start to understand that it's low frequency and high frequency, and these beings operate in a low frequency way because it gives them a greater sense of their false self. Mm -hmm. And so as we move past that, they feel that they lose their purpose. Uh -huh. yeah. And so they want to keep everything low frequency or what we call evil. Yeah. Right. There's no such thing as evil. That, that's what I said. And there's no such thing as demons. That's also what I said. <laughs> there's astral entities. Sure as hell, there's astral entities. Absolutely. Some are big and nasty. There's no, but there's no such thing as demons. That's also a religious perspective. Right. If we can see things with clarity to be the unshaken snow globe, we will start to understand ourselves better and therefore the greater reality. And we will be able to ascend the frequencies with in a very robust and repeatable nature that won't have to stop. Mm. Well said, man. Very well said. Oh, this is an amazing talk. Oh, God. I mean, uh, so once we like create new earth, what does that look like? I know that might be hard to conceptualize. You know, once we're, we, once the plan has been put forth and accomplished, you could say, once we are, are living on the wavelength of God or the greater self, what does this even look like, man? Is it just like, can, is it truly heaven? Are we actually the creators of heaven here? And, and that's what's happening. It's like, what does it look like? Okay. Is that even answerable? <laughs> well, in, I mean, in a way, sure, yeah. Um, the holistic, the connectivity and the holistic nature of, of ourself and the greater reality will become more tangible and more apparent to all of us. So, you know, what, what does that look like? It, it, it looks like that we start to recognize the self, the God within us all, we start to recognize the, the the connectivity and the and the communion through the clarity of moving into a higher frequency, and we'll start treating ourselves and each other in, in a more in a more tender way. It doesn't mean it's all kumbaya because there's no growth with all kumbaya. Mm -hmm. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. But there is a tangible recognition of more of the connectivity and the oneness yeah. of things, and then our actions, our thought process, our actions and behaviors are more reflective. Uh, of and symbolic of this oneness and we start we start to work in that way there is there is more service uh there is more uh collective understanding we understand that what's what's if it's not what's best for us and the collective simultaneously then it's not really the way to go uh and right now we still don't understand that so i mean the whole thing is heaven the whole multiverse if you ask me the whole the whole thing is heaven, right? It's just what is our attention on? If our attention is on discordant belief systems, so-called knowledge and separation, then that's the reality we're going to create for ourselves. If our attention is is on the oneness and the connectivity and the communion and the clarity that happens as we move as we move up and work more with ourselves, then that will be the reality that we create for ourselves. So, uh, you know, dare I say, I have the third book is coming out in August, but the the fourth book that comes out in January of 2026 is all about the law of attention, mm. the law of attention remastered. Mm -hmm. And once we start to master our attention, there is nothing that we can't accomplish. So moving up in the frequency, this, this heaven on earth <clears throat> has to do with the holistic nature. We're in more communion with what we are, and therefore we're in more communion and connectivity with each other, because at the core, it's all the same self with a capital S, it's all God. Mm -hmm. And that will that will start to completely dominate our thought process, the actions, the behaviors that we develop. Mm -hmm. From a purely human perspective, the idea, and what was behind your question, the idea of heaven on earth, from a human being's perspective, heaven on earth is really the seventh frequency. Because at the seventh frequency, from my direct experience at the seventh frequency, the oneness is tangible and apparent 
and there's no ill will towards anything or anyone because it is obvious if you have ill will towards anything or anyone you can actually feel that you're doing it to yourself yeah so yeah. it stops and it tracks the seventh frequency from a human perspective is is heaven on earth but the fourth frequency is a wonderful change from what the way that we have been operating and it, and it must be from my perspective gary it must be done gradually mm. right because if we went from here and we just kept going right to the seventh frequency without stopping if we did this i can tell you what's going to happen this mm -hmm. okay because that is that's atlantis in a nutshell oh. what, what what i just showed yeah. you right uh -huh. so the skyrocketing uh, operating at these incredibly high frequencies right and then as, as soon as we kind of left behind our own connection and the oneness and we started to try to dominate nature and genetics and life, which is, that's the fall, by the way, what I just said. And then this starts to happen, mm -hmm. right? So we want to ascend the frequencies in a very slow, robust, and repeatable way. And that's exactly what's going to happen. That's exactly what is happening. And I can tell you for a fact that it's a gigantic success. It's already happened. We're simply moving our awareness to each phase of it. That way we get the most out of it. Mm. It's just like you talked about, a, do we dance to get to the end of the song? No. Mm. So we have to put our attention on each word, within each sentence, within each paragraph of this great book of the Akashic Records of the History of Humanity. That way we get the most out of our story of what it's been like to be human. Very well said. Speechless again. <laughs> yeah, man uh this is an honor for me to do this with you and have you on here this is a wonderful talk i feel it i feel it man i feel that within and um yeah hallelujah amen to all of that i think this is really where we're going and um yeah wonderful time to be alive and wonderful time to have you alive here to shed light hmm. uh, upon this knowledge for us and that's it man i think we can probably start to wrap this up on that note <laughs> to be honest <laughs> oh man uh do you have anything else you want to say if any last words for the pod uh yeah i i would say that know that it has already been accomplished yeah just yeah. to know that and and to feel that mm -hmm. okay and to operate with discernment and discernment is only uh, possible through detachment mm -hmm. right so kind of see it like it's a movie because it kind of is but we're so immersed in the dream state that we don't realize that this is kind of us just dreaming the human experience because the moment that you leave your body the moment what we call death the moment that you leave your body you're going to look back at your body with complete and utter indifference and the entire story that you have been telling yourself your whole life will just disappear mm -hmm. the key is to incorporate as much of that as you can while you're here so you can experience the depth of yourself and the joyous nature of this experience, even as the thrashings of a dying consciousness are happening, to be able to experience your own higher frequency and your own joy. And the only way to do that is detachment. And then the detachment will give you discernment. And that discernment will give you your own intuition and it will guide you and it will never allow you to step backwards because intuition is just the opposite. It's the higher self speaking to you in pure energetics that gets translated. You'll know what to do, what not to do, when to do it, what to say, what not to say, and whom to say it to. And the key is to stop being the shaken snow globe and to become so accepting. And when I say accepting, I mean love. So accepting of yourself as you are right now, warts and all, hmm. that you can effortlessly be present. And once you're effortlessly present, the snow globe has stopped. And the detachment will take over and all your wisdom will guide you. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's a mic drop moment right there, RJ. You are something else. Please keep doing your thing, man. I wish you all the best. Uh, this was an amazing conversation. You are a very special being here. I wish you all the best, like I said, and uh, that's it, man. Peace and love to you. It's an honor for me to talk to you, and um, that's it. I'll put all your links down in the description for anybody that listened this long, and yeah, that's it. The kingdom of heaven is here. It, it is here, here and now, in the stillness, you will find. Thank you, RJ. Um, Th thank you for having me, Gary. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. Of course. Of course, man. Peace and love to you and peace and love to anybody that listened this long.
See you later.